Welcome to this episode of Open Insights. Today we're going to be doing things slightly differently. We typically have a number of conferences that we attend where we get to have fantastic conversations with a number of education leaders. Uh, today we're going to be exploring uh, conversations with three leaders. Dustin Mundy of Hamilton City Schools, and we'll be talking about data integrations. Emily Doblinger of Ross Local, we'll be talking about MTSS implementation. And Stacey Bailey from Clay Local, and we'll be talking about data insights as well, particularly when it comes to chronic absenteeism. Their perspectives are going to showcase how early warning systems enhance student support and interventions. We hope you enjoy. All right, I'm really excited to be here with a friend, and actually, I would say uh, part of the part of the home family here uh, with Dustin Mundy. And Dustin's coming from us from from Hamilton City School District, where Aubrey has its roots. So it's always fun to bring someone in, and and uh, you know, many years later, just kind of do some reflection. Happy to introduce Dustin, and um, I guess I'll kick it off with just saying, like, hey, man, like, uh, how, um, what, what are what are some of the biggest things that you see? occupying educators time right now um, in 2024 that you see in your role? Yeah, that's that's a great question. Um, first, yeah, thanks for having me. Really, really good to be here. Um, I would say, I mean, I think with just the immense amount of data that we have, I think working through that, determining what we need to really use, determining where we need to use it, and really trying to get it into the right hands is really the key. I think, I think that last part is really key is how do I get it into the right hands? And ultimately the right hands are the teachers. I need to get this data into the hands of teachers. I don't need them anal I don't need them doing the analysis. I need to get it into their hands so they can make really good decisions about it. And I think that they, taking it from the, the level where we get it at the state level or wherever and getting it all the way to them in a usable format is really, it's a big lift, it's a yeah. heavy lift. Yeah, yeah, so always part of that challenge is like, how do you take all the different siloed bits and pieces of data, bring it into one place so that you can actually use it to inform your classroom instruction, right? Yeah, well, ultimately that's the purpose, yeah. right? Right, exactly. So um, I know like we've been working on a little bit of a project with you with a, we've been thinking about early morning, yeah. right? And how to do it. So, so maybe give me a little bit of your thoughts on how you think early morning should work or some of the concepts that we're exploring. I'm just curious. Yeah, no, that's a great question. I mean, uh, ultimately with early, early warning, you need to kind of pick your parameters or benchmarks, right? So what, what do you think is going to really tell you these are the things that we need to be concerned about? And I think once you pick those items and you really kind of tease out, hey, how am I going to get those items into one place? Then you can give your, your 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 leadership and then ultimately your teachers the ability to kind of visualize that and make decisions as a result of it. I think the hard part is like you mentioned before, it's all siloed, yeah. right? Your attendance is over here, and your discipline's over here, and this is over here, and your oh my gosh, your test scores over here. Oh by the way, this current grades are over here, and really be able to bring all that together, give it give it one kind of screen to see it all. And oh by the way, and then we can for us, you know, obviously rolling out this dashboard that we we just did you know, the, the color coding makes it really simple. Like, oh my gosh, this, these are my reds. These are, my, I, I know these students are reds. We, what, what are we doing? And obviously that, and then let's take it one step further. How do we then tie that to the MTSS process and say, which things are working for these students? I took a student from a red to yellow using this, right? Cause that's, that's, that's critical. And if we can do that as a district and if, and if we can actually empower our teachers to do that, Oh my gosh, it's, our change it's, yeah. becomes, we, we can change things exponentially. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of a, I don't know, like a memory nostalgia call out. Okay, so you, you've you known the story of Aubrey, right? you've been sure. there, you've walked alongside us with a lot of it. So I'm just curious, like, like maybe do a shout out, like what has been your observation just from us as a company, how we've grown, uh, just any things that come to mind? I, I think I think one of my favorite things is how, and again, obviously I know you and Chris, right, but how you've really stayed true to your roots and how Aubrey has really stayed true and connected to what education needs. I think it's really easy to be like, well, this is our path and we're heading down this path. And if you as a school want to come with us, great. But the, I think the difference is I think you guys have really done a good job of saying, whoa, this is what, you know, this is what schools need right now, whether it's portrait of a graduate or it's early warning systems or whatever it might be. You've been able to adapt and your product has really morphed into being able to serve those districts in that regard. And I think that's really tremendous because I can still remember sitting at my desk, seeing the very first iteration of Abre, and it was like a couple of little icons on a screen. And I was like, whoa, this is so cool. And now it's like, oh my gosh, I go to Abre to see, you know, how many kids are enrolled in fifth grade at Linden Elementary that, 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 that are ELL so that I can provide this type of translation device to them. I mean, like, and I get it in an instant. Yeah. yeah I yeah. mean, it's, it's wild that, you know, it went from that to this in such a short period of time. All right, so uh, kind of last question, last two questions here. Um, we always like to ask, like, and look, and I, I know you a little bit, so that's fair. 
what made you take, what drew you to education as a profession? I mean, it's a soul profession, right? So I'm just curious, like, like what, what was it for you that was the light bulb moment where you're just like, this is what I want to do? <laughs> That's, that's a great question. And my story is probably different than most because uh, mine actually happened on the side of the road. Uh, I was actually working as a forensic auditor for Ernst & Young and uh, I got into a, an accident and it was fairly traumatic and I was laying on the side of the road and I remember going, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. And I had that, that moment of going, ask myself, what do you really want to do? And I, I kept thinking, you know what? I had all of these amazing people in my life, teachers, coaches, you know, mentors that really had a positive impact yeah. and it had gotten me to where I was at that point. Um, not necessarily laying on the side of the road, but to that point in my career and college graduate, all those types of things. I'm like, I want to go do that. I want to give a chance to give back. And, um, you know, hopefully someday someone can look back and say, you know what, that guy had a, a positive impact on me and I was able to make someone's life just a little bit better as a result. Love it. So you're a math teacher. Yes. Um, I always like to ask this question. Like if we are, um, if, if our podcast was to be sponsored by some nostalgic thing, I'd be curious for you, like, what would be one of the things that you would pick to be like, oh, this episode would be sponsored by, I mean, again, I'm thinking like mimeograph. Or, yeah, or like, I, I, I think because of the time that I grew up in, the time I was in school, I remember like it being really cool to get like your TI-81 or TI-82 graphing calculator. So I feel like it would be sponsored by that. And it would only be with a caveat that you, they would teach you how to program your own games so that when you were bored in class, like I might have been, you were playing Tetris or Snake or whatever because, you know, that was really cool. And then all of a sudden, you know, Nokia came out with their phone and they came out with Snake. But, um, we, but done still. That, we had done that many years before that, just saying Nokia. I love it. Oh, it's great. Well, Dustin, thank you. It's really cool to have you on this uh yeah um on our podcast and just uh yeah i look forward to talking more and uh mad shout out to to big blue and and the home and yeah. uh well thanks for having me i really appreciate it and thanks for uh all you and your team do for hamilton you give us a lot of support we really appreciate it you bet building on dustin's insights about data integration and accessible information emily domlinger shares her experience of implementing mtss in early warning systems demonstrating how clean data enables effective interventions. So I'm here with Emily, and I'm really excited to have a conversation uh, probably about a number of things. So um, I'm going to let her do a quick introduction. Um, but uh, I think what I want to like dive in a little bit is ask just some questions of you about how Aubrey's been helping Ross in the in the last couple of years. Um, but yeah, let me kick it off. Let's, 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 let's kick it off with fun. Okay, so tell me, what is the your, your director of curriculum instruction? Yes. What's the weirdest lesson plan you've seen? Um, oh, weirdest. I don't know. We have a lot of partnership with Butler Tech, and so some of the things that they get to do within those classrooms are really incredible. I wouldn't say weird, but, like, super incredible. Okay, we'll expand the data. Just amazing. Yeah. Like the most, yeah. I mean, it's like hands-on kids doing real live work that they would do in the field. But I just, I mean, I love watching Socratic seminars in English classes. I love watching kindergartners in stations. Like, when I can walk into a kindergarten classroom... And they're in 12 different stations, all doing work. Like, it's it. that is amazing. Isn't it amazing? It's amazing. Yeah. And the teacher's just meeting with one kid, and all the other kids are doing exactly what they need to do. Yeah. It's really incredible. Su super cool. Yes. All right, so let's dive in. So um, hey. Ross is, I kind of consider Ross a, a sort of a, a family partnership with us, just because yeah. we've been around for so long. Um, uh, so I'm just curious, like, how has Abre um, helped your district um, in any, any type of way? Just curious. So this year, our focus um, and over the next three years is really building a robust MTSS system. And so we have been able to, with Aubre um, and our partnership, start our early warning system as a step one yeah. in, in this MTSS space. And so just being able to make sure all of our data is being input and it's clean. Yep. And then all of the data that it's shooting out to us is actionable and we're able to take that and build intervention plans and build progress monitoring tools, just things that will help not only our teachers, but our administrators um, just dig deeper into what kids need and support them has been incredible. So, so how are you thinking about early warning? Like what are the variables that, that really come to mind when, when Ross approaches this? So our early warning system consists of um, obviously behavior, behavior. attendance, mm -hmm. but we're also looking at MAP scores. Okay. We're looking at failure, failure grades. Huh? Um, we're on a block system for one building, but a traditional bell schedule for our other two buildings. And so how do we manage those differences? Um, we're looking at um, just different ways to look at 
how grades are impacting as a trigger. Answer, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Um, but the biggest thing we're looking at is we're breaking down behavior, not just by suspensions, but detentions and out of school suspensions and in school suspensions and just the color coding so that we can target certain areas. So all of our kids that are in red for attendance, do they have attendance plans? Are we in communication with their parents? All the kids that are in red for MAP, do we have strategic right. plans in place for them to help them meet their growth marks? Yeah. And so we're able to pinpoint what specifically they're triggering and do the work where before it'd be all spreadsheets yeah. and a seller yeah, color yeah, coding. Yeah, it's laborious. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right, so uh, kind of last two questions yeah. here, but first one I always like to ask is like, okay, what what makes you tick as an educator? Like, what brought you to the field? Like, why you, you know, it's it's I like to use the example like this is sort of like a uh, like it's a soul profession. Yes, you know? it is. So I'm just curious, like, what what brought you what brought you to it? Um, I've always had this desire for every kid to feel like they matter in this world where they're growing up, not knowing who they're gonna be, but everything about them is important, and so. They have a voice. They get to kind of own their story, but they have trusted adults around them yeah. that will help cultivate that work and just grow them into good human beings. Yeah. And so I kind of approach... Grow them into good human yeah. beings. So I, I, I mean, I approach it like I do my own two children. Yeah. Like my legacy is what I leave in them. And so as a teacher and as an educator, that was always the thing I wanted to leave a legacy that... When I would see people on the on the side of the road or whatever, they would see me like that impact that I had in their life made them a better person. Yeah. For whatever they're doing now. Yeah. All right. So last thing. Okay. You know how like podcasts like I'll have this thing where like it's sponsored by yeah blah blah blah. If you could pick a nostalgia memory out of K twelve to sponsor this episode, I mean, just as kind of like a joke, just yeah. not as like the joke. Yeah. What would you pick? Um. So something that my principal would always say to our kids and still to this day says to our kids or we are who we are and so we're sponsored by we are who we are we're sponsored by we are who we are yeah i love it yeah all right emily thank you so much for thank this you. i really appreciate it yeah it's great cool. talking with you nice to talk to you after emily's explanation of mtss and early warning indicators stacy bailey from clay local shows how these systems work in a unified district focusing on attendance and intervention. I'm really excited to be here with Stacy Bailey from Clay... Local. Local, sorry. I was gonna say Clay County accident, <laughs> but I was like Clay Local. And uh, really excited to have this conversation with Stacy. Um, she is uh, one of our, uh, uh, Clay Local is one of our, uh, one of our customers. And just gonna have a fun riff here and talk about some of the things that are happening uh, in school and from her perspective as an assistant uh, principal. So, Stacy. Yep. All right, so uh, assistant principal at an elementary, high school, middle? So we're a above. very tiny district. So we house all three. We have our elementary, middle school, and high school all in one building. We have about 700 students. So I get to be the privilege. I get the privilege of being the assistant principal of preschool to 12th grade. Wow. Yeah. How is that? Yeah, it's fun. I <laughs> taught kindergarten for 10 years. So the littles are where my heart is. So my challenge was our middle school and high school kids. But I've done this for four years now, and I've built a great relationship with some of our kiddos, and I love it. I tell them all the time, I'm like, I can have adult conversations with you guys. My little five-year-olds love me and want me to be, like, their mom and their, yeah. So what do you see right now? Like, in your role, what are the big things, the, the, the big issues that you've seen crop up in your role as an assistant principal? Yeah, so the challenges at el elementary are a little bit different than my middle school and high school. But across the district, attendance is like our big thing. Attendance. Attendance. Mm -hmm. So what are we doing to keep our attendance high yep. and to get rid of that chronic absenteeism? Um, and then at our middle school and high school level, it goes back to those ABCs. So attendance, behavior, um, and course completion. Um, and me and my friend Jill, who's with me today, um, we're working toward our graduation rate. Okay. Increasing. Yep. yep. Increasing mm -hmm. those especially with like our special ed. Yep. So that's what we're, that's, 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 that's it. our that's challenge. Top yep. The, that's yep. Top that's our top, yep. That's our top thing. So I feel like uh, a bit obligated here to ask how has Aubrey been helping you with chronic absenteeism? So it's, it's helped us really dial down and drill down to what is our grade level that's being affected the most, um, days of the week. What are the days of the week that we're seeing the most missed, um, Wednesdays. I was going to say, what, to what is the day? It's Wednesday. Wednesday. Why Wednesday. do you think that? How come? 
I don't know. I don't know if it's middle of the week or what, like, what's going on. Time to take a vacation. Peace out. I know. Out. I'm like, I figured Friday yeah. we can have that three-day weekend. Yeah. Or that Monday have that three-day weekend. But it's Wednesday. Yeah. Um, and we're really starting to see our trends in our attendance with our academics. Um, the correlation, you mean? Between, yeah. yeah. We're, we're starting to see that. And really getting just down into it. Like, we're new to it. Um, so we worked a lot with our staff to really show them what they can do with it on their end too. And our, we've had great feedback from our teachers. Um, they like getting on there, seeing their data and just a quick, just one click of the button. They could see state testing. They can see our district testing. They can see anything that we're doing with these kiddos. And it's been nice. Would you say we've helped with, um, at least increase the efficiency of them being able to find the relevant. Yeah, the, absolutely. The, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, that's great. That's, um, I mean, being a former teacher, that's what we're kind of always af after for right. as well. Oh, I love that. That's great. Um, so uh, I'd like to ask this question, but um, education is one of those jobs where uh, it's it, it's a soul job, right? You know, it really affects your soul. So I'm just curious, like, what brought you to it? What, 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 what took you in this journey here in this direction? So education, I come from a, I'm first generation. Okay. Um, first generation, college, master's degree, all that stuff. Um, and I come from low income and I was that kid in school that I was quiet. I made good grades. So we don't know who Stacy is. Um, and I didn't know the options out there for me. So guidance was not, and I was quiet. So I wasn't out there in guidance office every day asking for help. And I wanted that to change. I wanted to see change in that. I wanted to see these quiet kids get put into the spotlight because I felt like we were being punished because we followed the rules and we were quiet and we Wait, put so all the attention. Wait, so say a little bit attention. more punished in the sense of not having attention directed towards you or yeah, pushing not, you harder? Or? Yeah, not knowing. Um, I mean, I didn't have the background to know FAFSA, uh, to know college selection, to know um, what was out there for me. So I was like, I want to get into education and I want to start little. So kindergarten, what do you want to be when you grow up, guys? And put those options out there. I mean, you still get the, I want to be a dinosaur. I want to be an astronaut. I want, do want to, to be a dinosaur. I, yeah, a unicorn. <laughs> and just, you know, showing them. And I had a third grade teacher who I absolutely adored. And I actually got to work with her um, close to the end of her career. That's awesome. So it was amazing. And she just showed me how fun it could yeah. be. Yeah. And so that's really what started was that teacher. But then just going through my educational experiences and I'm like, I just want to be a change maker. I just want to be a positive influence on all of my kiddos lives. And I gravitate toward these kiddos that were just like me in school and checking in with them and showing them their options. I don't know. I just I love that. I love it. Great. It's not for the paycheck. It's <laughs> no By <thought>. any means <laughs> is it for the paycheck. <laughs> Very true. All right, so last question. Uh, yeah. If, if you could pick a random nostalgic memory from K-12 to sponsor this Stacy episode, what would it be? <laughs> okay, you remember the parachutes oh in my goodness. gym class. Yes, yes. The parachutes. Walking into the gym class and seeing the parachute <laughs> out on the floor and being like, yeah, we get to play with the parachute. I hope I get to go underneath it and sit in the, the big bubble. The bubble. Yeah. Oh, that's such a perfect, that is such a perfect yeah. sponsorship. Okay. Or the tube TV rolling into the classroom. The <laughs> and you're always like, please don't tip and crush someone. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Either one of those would work. Oh, I love that. Well, thank you so much, Stacey. I really yeah. appreciate thank that. Thank you. So, so we're finishing up here with Stacy, And again, what we kind of hit on was a, a number of things that we've been helping her and uh, her colleagues in her role. Um, really thinking about how can we uh, target chronic absenteeism and get that data in front of teachers and uh, district leadership right away um, to make a really good informed decisions on how to help kids. Our exploration of early warning systems reveal three key insights. Actionable data enables teachers to make immediate decisions. MTSS integration supports targeted interventions and attendance monitoring drives student success. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Open Insights. Subscribe for more educational information discussions.